That went from zero to ten, like that. Like there was, like whoa. I mean, I I should have saw it because there was like, there was obvious flags for the childhood friend. If I think about it, but even then, like I thought this was gonna be like a comfy slice of life episode, and it was gonna end like a slice of life episode, build up and all that. But that ending, just like, straight up, out of nowhere, chaos. Like, straight up, chaos. That's exactly what happened in that final moment of the episode. I'm like, like, whoa. <laughs> like, it was just such a calm episode. It was a really calm episode. And then all of a sudden, that final segment comes in, childhood friend, the ship sinks. Just like, yo. <laughs> like, yo. Okay, so anyways, I, I I need to talk about that. Before I get into slice of life stuff, I just need to I need to discuss my thoughts on this. Okay, so the childhood friend, that's kinda sad. I mean, normally the childhood friend never gets to win at all. Like in terms of romance wise. I mean it's always the childhood friend that gets shot down. It, it's just common sense, okay? It it happens in like almost every single manga or anime or literature. That's from Japan. Usually the childhood friend never wins, and it's always the new girl. And so it was understandable that she wasn't going to win at all in the romance department because there was obvious tension with romance in this episode. And it was obvious she was going to lose. But all of a sudden, their best way to handle this and to get the childhood friend out of the picture is by shooting her down. So the ship just straight sunk. Just went straight down, and it sunk. So if you had hope, well, that hope is gone, so bye-bye. <laughs> Anyways, I, I feel like the this scene with her sacrificing herself and then dying for the main character, I feel like this is going to be the, uh, the initiator for the MC to probably lose all emotions. Remember what the main plot of this episode was, okay? Let, let's focus on the message of this episode and what it was trying to do. Number one, emotions. That's the big factor of the episode. In emotions, apparently there's people on the mainland that give up their emotions. They don't want to have emotions. It, it seems like they willingly give up their emotions. At the very least, you know, our main female character, she gives up her emotions. We know for a fact she does, and she doesn't want to feel anything. And so in this case, you can assume that since emotions are playing a very key role in this story, most likely the main character after losing his childhood friend, because she's gone, she's, she's Sayonara, most likely after losing his friend, he's probably going to want to rid himself of emotions. I, I could definitely see that being like a little big part of this story, him going for a little character arc of him not wanting emotions because he just doesn't want to feel pain and the sense of loss that he had because he lost a friend like that just right in front of him. It's going to be very powerful, so he's probably not going to want to feel that whatsoever. And then also on top of that too, we also have to look that now that this has happened, this has just changed the story from like sailing through the ocean on the mud well to like running away from the world type story like they're fugitives now that's how you can actually look at the story now so it's going to be an adventure story it's definitely going to be an adventure story it's not going to be focused on the mud well it's going to be them going off and trying to go to different lands and stuff trying to figure out what is really going on so the overall theme of the series if you thought it was going to be like staying on the mud well or whatever, or staying on the island or something, then you're sadly mistaken. It's definitely becoming an adventure series now because of the finale of the episode. So let's discuss what happened this episode with the build-up. So anyways, one of the big things that we found out about was that there's these creatures that were discovered a while back, and there's some on this island which looks like this big massing ball of flesh or whatever. I, I, that's the only thing I could really describe it. It's like a pulsing ball of flesh. It's disgusting looking, and basically these creatures, they absorb and eat emotions. They suck out the emotions of, you know, humans. And so if you were to, let's say, put your hand on it or try to put your hand inside of it, basically your emotions are sucked out. You start seeing memories from other people flow within you, and it also tries to grab your memories and all your emotions and just yank them out. That's basically what it does. Now, it is clear as day now, or at the very least confirmed so far, that 
that even if this creature does absorb your emotions, you can get your emotions back, because our main female character, she is starting to get emotions once again. She's starting to cry, she's getting upset and all that, and so it's clear as day that even though this creature takes your emotions away, it's not permanently gone. Maybe there is a solution to where they are permanently gone, maybe on the mainland, but at the very least, the creature we have seen already established, it can't permanently take your emotions away. Now, another thing, too, because we also know that our main female character, she is like some form of runaway. For whatever reason, we don't understand properly, but somehow she is no longer from the mainland because she was a long time ago with her family, but now she was like on that island, which was like stranded out in the middle of nowhere, and then she had like a bunch of graves all over the place. So it really makes you wonder. It was probably like a war zone or something, I want to assume so, and eventually she was the only one left, and she just didn't know or have any means to get away, so she just stayed there. I, I Maybe something like that, I, I don't know. But overall, from what you can assume, she's also probably a runaway as well, and probably very important if I had to assume when it comes to plot-wise and story development stuff, I want to assume she's probably very important for the in-game goal of the series for the enemy side. That's what I'm going to assume. Now, another thing, too, we have to take note of is the fact that the chieftain, you know, the one that's like the political figure or whatever, the chieftain that, you know, you would think would be the main head of what goes on on the Mudwell, well, apparently the chieftain is actually just a pawn, just a puppet, being controlled by strings by that Council of Elders, which makes a lot of sense, because I did discuss about them in my first impressions, that they obviously know a lot. I mean, they're elders automatically, they have to know a lot of what's going on and how the world works, or what's going on with the Mudwell. Well, on top of that, though, by the way they want to hide things, by the way they don't want to tell secrets, or there hasn't been any articles written down, then it makes a lot of sense that they're trying to hide something. They're trying to hide stuff from history. And in this case, when we found out that the chieftain's just like a puppet, but then when, you know, they reach the age of, you know, 61, the unmarked reach the age of 61, that's when they're finally filled in and added to the Council of Elders, then it makes a lot of sense that it's obvious. They don't want to tell anyone what's really going on. They don't want to tell the truth to the world or the people that are on the Mudwell. They're just just keeping it to themselves, which could probably be dangerous knowledge. Maybe there is a reason why they're not saying it, but at the same time, though, maybe they could be out for themselves as well. However, there is clarification that apparently everyone on the ship, the Mudwell, they are fugitives. They are people that are wanted by the mainland. They are being hunted down and pursued, and basically they're on the wanted list. So that's basically what's going on here. What, why, you know, maybe they don't want to have any contact with the outside and why they're just drifting in the ocean is because they're wanted, and the people are trying to hunt them down, and apparently they're sinners. Now, I'm going to assume they're sinners because they want emotions. They, they don't want to rid themselves of emotions. I'm assuming that's why they're sinners. I could be wrong there, but that could be the reason why, because it looks like the mainland, everything is just about being a soldier and giving up your emotions, and that could be why they're angry with them, because they're not willing to fall in line and just give up their emotions and then go to, you know, war or whatever. That could be what's happening. Anyways, though, I do believe that visually-wise, the episode is actually even better than the first episode. The visuals look really good, and some aspects of it, in terms of color palette-wise, it once again, another anime from this season reminds me of Studio Ghibli. It does. It, it really does. Just the color palette. I'm not talking about just the, the story style. I'm just talking about the color palette reminds me of it, and it's very beautiful. A very beautiful series, and I, I cannot put down the visuals whatsoever because of how good it really does look. So, anyway, I mean, it's a good, it's a good episode. It, it's a really good episode. It just, like, I was surprised of how stunning the finale of episode two was. I didn't think it would get that extreme that quickly. I mean, I assumed something would eventually pick up, but around, like, episode four, three, five, somewhere around there, because that's usually when anime really start to, you know, kick it into high gear. I didn't think episode two would just start off like this, so I don't know if this is necessarily a good thing or not, because I don't know the original source. I don't know if they're rushing. I don't know if they're perfectly pacing this. I have no idea, but let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below how you felt about the latest episode of Children of the Wells. Did you enjoy episode 2? Did you hate episode 2? Please be honest in the comments below, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, and if you like this video, please leave a like, and also if you want to support me for I can continue to focus on YouTube, please go in the description and support me on Patreon. It does help me out a lot, so I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.